Welcome to the Rebirth Podcast. My name is Caitlin Hill. I have been on a massive journey of self-discovery since becoming a mom. I'm curious to find out how we can be the best version of ourselves as women and mothers and how that has a ripple effect on the rest of the world. I am so honored to have you listening here today. Please take a deep breath and welcome to the space. Hey everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of the Rebirth Podcast. My name is Caitlin Hill. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. It is a beautiful, gorgeous, sunny spring day outside, and I'm just like living for it. It's just, oh my gosh, it's a whole new world. We live up in Canada, and it is it gets very dark here in the winter, so I just feel like the spring just feels like this time of rebirth and regrowth and renewal. And I'm just like, I'm so here for it always. I feel like, <clears throat> excuse me, always in life we have opportunities for re- a rebirth, whether it's just um, changing our thoughts or changing the way we choose to look at something or just even waking up in the morning or the moon and the moon cycles. There's just so much rebirth uh, going on all the time and so much opportunity to look at things in a different way. And so, yeah, that brings me to kind of um, sort of, you know, where I'm at with this podcast and and like why I, I chose to give it that name. It always just like resonates with me whenever I hear the name of it. So on this week's episode, I want to talk about elimination communication. So this was something that we chose to do with the twins. And I had heard about it when I was actually not even pregnant with the twins yet. And I remember thinking, wow, that sounds so cool. Like you can potty train your babies from birth. Um, And it just immediately resonated with me. You know, when you hear something new and you've, you've never heard of it before, but it instantly kind of goes into your consciousness and you're like, oh, whoa, I like that. And it sort of sticks with you. Uh, That's when you know you're supposed to be following something. And that's what happened to me with elimination communication. And I, so I initially heard about it and I was kind of like, okay, cool. Like we'll put that, we'll put that in the folder of my, my mind and, and we'll see what happens when I have another baby. And um, yes, as you probably all know, I didn't just <laughs> get pregnant with one baby. I got pregnant with two babies. And even during my pregnancy, I still was like, it came up for me again about the elimination communication thing and how I wanted to try that, uh, you know, this this next time around with, with, um, with having more kids. So because for my first daughter, we just did the regular old disposable diapers and that worked for us and I didn't know anything different so that felt very normal and um I think we started potty training her when she was two I think it was like literally around her second birthday that we were like okay this is the time to start doing it but in terms of like nighttime diapers and stuff she didn't actually stop using the nighttime ones till she was about three I knew that I really wanted to get her out of nighttime diapers before we had the twins because I didn't want to have to deal with then trying to get her out of diapers and then, you know, diapering new kids. So that was like a hard before three years old, the nighttime diapers, but she had stopped wearing them during the day at two years old. Like it only took a couple weeks, you know, still with like lots of accidents and stuff. And then like the poos were a whole other thing, um, to adjust to, but yeah. So What I realize now, though, is now after going through elimination communication and doing it with two babies, is that we were actually teaching my first daughter, Safia, how to go to the bathroom in diapers. Like we were training her how to use diapers for two years instead of listening to what her body's natural desires were and cues and their natural um, instinctual ability to be able to go to the bathroom. We were, we were ignoring that. So we were actually training her to go to the bathroom in diapers. I know I'm trying to, I'm saying that in like five different ways, but it's just so crazy to me that that's what we were doing. And we thought that was totally normal. Like if she started going to the bathroom, we would just be like, oh, okay, cool. And she's like, she's, she's going poo over in the corner there with like her diaper on. And we would just like, let it happen, which is just like, feels so crazy to me now after we've done it this other way. So anyways, going back to the 
part about me being pregnant with twins and, and thinking about elimination communication. So I started listening to some podcasts on it and I was getting really interested in it and I actually purchased the top hat potty, which I will literally keep for the rest of my life because it's probably the best money I've ever spent. And I've never had so much satisfaction from an item I think in my life. And I really like things. So that's saying a lot. So I bought the elimination communication top hat potty and I received it, you know, in the mail and it was kind of, you know, like when I was pregnant, I just ordered so many different things and had all of the things that I needed and was like, you know, I always like to be more prepared than not. So I had the potty kind of like tucked away in the corner and I remember kind of like looking over at it and being like, are we going to do this? Like, I don't know. So yeah, basically the twins were born and I was kind of like eyeing the potty, you know, in the corner of the room, like just kind of like side eyeing it. And I was like, are we going to do this? And then I actually sat and I was listening to a podcast on elimination communication. Um, and it, it said like the woman who was speaking, she said, listen, like watch for their signs. In that moment, I actually had my little daughter Rumi with me and she was, she gave me a sign and I just grabbed the potty, put her on the toilet and she went poo like immediately. And I was like, oh my God. Like I was totally shook. Like, like just, whoa. Like it just, in one second, I was convinced that this was going to work and that it was a thing. So from there, basically, we did, we continued that on with my, you know, her twin sister and the both of them, and we were doing it. We got into such an amazing routine. Every single morning, Matisse and I would literally just sit in this bed, and I'd have one baby on one potty, and he'd have another baby on the other potty, and they would just sit, and they would have their morning poo. Like, they would get it all out for the whole day, and I found that, like, I kind of noticed that with my, you know, with the first time around when we were using diapers with my first daughter, um, that she was, um, she would kind of go in like bits. So it'd be like a little bit here, a little bit later on in the day. So we were like changing a lot more diapers. And then of course, not to mention the blowouts, which we never dealt with, with the twins. We never had to go through a blowout. Okay. Like, do you hear what I'm saying? Okay. I never had to deal with the poo up the back. Like this is not normal. Like we think that it's just like, oh, ha ha. It's normal. They pooed off their back. No, 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 no. They're not meant to be going in diapers. Okay. Like I understand it seems like it's easier and that you don't want to have to deal with, you know, whatever the extra time is for putting them on the potty. But if you were to add up all of the time, I'm sure it would be the exact same because you're still going to be having to clean the clothes and change, wipe the poo away and blah, blah, blah. Like it's, I think it's the same amount of effort in my opinion. So anyways, we never had to deal with any of that because they were getting all of it out first thing in the morning. And then for the rest of the day, um, you know, they would have like peas and stuff and sometimes we would catch them and sometimes we wouldn't. That was our thing is that I was super chill about it. Like I wasn't trying to be like super anal partially because I couldn't be, we had two babies and I think that it could have been a, you know, I could have been even more intense about it if I was just dealing with one kid. Um, but yeah, with two, I had to be like pretty lax about it on the peas, but they were like not, they knew when they wanted to go to the bathroom, they would, they would have the signal, they show the sign. And that's the thing is that they actually only show their signals of having to go to the bathroom for the first six months or so. And then if you're just putting them in diapers, they stop giving you that signal because if you're just ignoring it, then they're like, I'm not going to communicate that. And I actually noticed that I was became so much more in tune to listening to the signs and signals of when they had to go to the bathroom because I had to be like, I had to really tune into that, which also allowed me to tune into all of the other feelings and emotions that were coming up for them. I was like, I felt like it was kind of like we were really connected, which of course we are. So yeah, so we kind of went through that, you know, it, it for sure went through like an evolution when we went started when they started having solids and you know it kind of like evolved and grew and changed over time but we still stayed strong with it throughout the whole time um and then I think it was around I want to say gosh time is a bit of a blur but they were completely out of diapers by two like and I mean at nighttime. 
So there was there was an evolution to that. But because I remember being like, I'm going to have them out of diapers by 18 months. Again, I was doing this with twins. I think it would have been different if I was doing it with one kid. I could have had them for sure. Totally out of diapers by 18 months. And also this isn't potty training. Okay. This is staying in alignment with what your child's natural bodily functions are and giving them the opportunity to go to the bathroom when they are showing a sign that they have to go. So it's not actually potty training. It's just literally giving them a potty when they need to go. So there was no like training involved. They they already know within themselves that they need to go and when they have to go. Um, but you know, the diaper industry is like a, a billion dollar industry. And of course they don't want you to know that your kids can actually just go to the bathroom on their own. So, and there's tons of different countries where they don't use diapers at all. And if you think about probably only about, I would say over just over a hundred years ago, our ancestors would not have been using diapers. They would have been, they would have known that their babies were able to go on their own. So, um, diapers are pretty new <laughs> when you think about it. So anyways, um, yeah, we, we, we bef- definitely, like I said, there was like an evolution to it. There was like, um, you know, some, they kind of went through like natural pro- pro- processes or pro- parts where they just like, you know, they would resist wanting to go to the bathroom, which again, my first, you know, Safia did it that as well. So I feel like that's kind of like a normal, um, thing to go through, but overall, like when I look at it as a whole, I'm like, oh my God, that was like the best thing that we ever did. Like, I am not joking you, the best thing we ever did. I never thought I would be so passionate about, <laughs> about go- kids going to the bathroom, but let me tell you, it just, w- once your mind is able to see something from a different perspective, you can't unsee that. Like now I'm just like, oh my God, like why why are we potty training kids to, to go actually in the diaper rather. And then at two years old or three years old or whatever, you're planning to potty train them. Then you're like, Oh no, no, no. Don't go in there anymore. No, 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 no. Now you have to go on this big, scary potty that you haven't been used to and have never gone on for, you know, the first years of your life. Right. So it's kind of like a lot of unlearning along with so many other things that we've learned that is really just kind of like this mind set shift around like, okay, no, my kids can do that. And, and trusting in, in them and knowing that they are fully capable to do it. Um, you know, babies are born with that control of being able to know when they, when they have to go and when they don't have to go. So yeah. Um, let me think the, the, the evolution of it definitely, it, it, it changed. But like I said, they were completely, I wasn't buying diapers anymore by by two years old. And it's so funny now. Cause I like walk past the diaper aisle and I'm like, Whoa, that went fast, you know? And especially with twins, like if you think about the money that you're spending, um, or putting towards diapers, it's, it can, it could really add up. Like if I still had them in diapers, they're, they're three years old now. And of course there was like, when we were going through the potty training process, even though they were used to going on the toilet, there was still tons of accidents. They were still peeing on the floor. They were still, you know, they, they still, you know, were having accidents, but we still just kept with it. We kept on, it wasn't like when there was an accident, I was like, oh no, they, they need to have diapers on now. It was like, okay, we just have to keep on like presenting the potty and giving them the opportunities and, and having the potty right there. And, um, it was just this like very natural journey it felt. Um, but never once did I feel like, oh no, like this, they can't do this or they're not able to do this. And I understand like it can seem like it's, it's kind of scary. Like how am I actually going to do this and how are they going to be able to do that? But once you're able to get past that yourself, like the kids already know. And so that's, that's the thing (laughs) is that it really comes down to like maybe just training the parents more than the kids. Like you, you, we actually need a lot more work around this sort of, um, this sort of thing than they do. Like we, we need to unlearn and we need to train our minds to understand how much kids and babies are capable of because they are literally born geniuses. Like they're born perfect. 
And then, you know, they're molded and shaped by society and parents, of course, and where, where the parents are at. And so if, if like we, as the parents can, can understand what they can do, then it's like you, if you can just get back, get out of your own way and let them just go to the bathroom on their own, then, then you're golden. You know, that's really the hardest part. So overall, I would say you don't have anything to lose. Like I would just do it (laughs) and try it. And if it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you, but at least you gave it a shot and you can see how it goes. Um, If you are wanting to learn in more detail how to do it, definitely subscribe to my newsletter because I will be sharing a lot more information on different offerings and programs that I'll be sharing where that'll go into more detail about how to do elimination communication. And I'm super, super passionate about it. Um, and I just know that that more parents need to know about this and this needs to become more common because it's like, why don't we know about this? Like, why aren't we being taught about this um, from, uh, you know, anywhere. (laughs) Basically, it's not common knowledge yet. I think that it will be and it will become more common because people will start to see how brilliant it is and how brilliant our kids are that they're able to to do this on their own. Thank you so much for watching this week's video. If you haven't already subscribed, if you're listening to this on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. If you're listening to this on any of my podcast platforms, please give me a five-star rating if you feel that I deserve it. I am so grateful to have you here. Please share this with your friends and family or anyone that you think this this would be helpful for. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you're having the best day ever and I'm sending so much love to you on your journey. Ciao for now.